Well, it's hump day, and it's also a big day, and a day that we still can't determine how often it happens, but we have a big triple number in the same sign, Kazemi Conjunction today. It's all in Pisces. Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. It's Wednesday, the 28th. We have a leap year this year, so one more day of February tomorrow. And that day tomorrow is also going to encompass a couple of things related to the big conjunction today. So we'll break all that down here. The one thing about this conjunction, so three planets at nine degrees in Pisces. We've talked about it the last two days. Yesterday was the big breakdown and explanation about the thing itself. Today, a little bit of application and then looking forward past it. But the one thing, because I've already had some challenges in this trip with the awning and the van, etc., well, I decided that I better look and see where this thing is because I'm supposed to launch out of here in a couple of hours and head to Little Rock to meet none other than Robert Glasscock. And as I'm thinking about this, I'm realizing, wait a minute, Mercury rules transportation. <laughs> okay, so what <laughs> what are we dealing with here? So I put up my own natal chart and look and see that this is in the ninth house. Well, that's long-distance transportation, typically over water. There's not much water between here and Little Rock, not at least of that kind. So uh, even though it's going to be for me in the van about a 10-hour drive, probably it's not the ninth house. So it would be the third house, which, of course, is opposite the ninth. And there in my natal chart at 5 degrees is Pluto. Well, this conversation that I had with Robert on Sunday as I was pulling out of North Carolina... We talked about Pluto, uh, and I'll have to get all of that together. Believe me, I will. I'll get it together. It'll probably be a couple of more days just from the schedule and everything. But I will get that together. And he was talking about the influence of Pluto in this whole process of what's going on in my own life right now being so transformational. The other thing that he brought up was some very favorable solar arc positions and aspects related to Saturn. I know a lot of you have been looking at this in your own charts, and you see Saturn there, and maybe Pluto is in some kind of aspect, or maybe Mars is in some kind of hard aspect to it, or Uranus, and you're looking at it, which of course would bring Jupiter into it, and that would be some kind of magnification around this triple conjunction. So we're thinking about how could this affect me, and that's the obvious thing you should be thinking about. Or you could say it another way, what is Saturn going to do to me? <laughs> and in my case, what is Pluto and Saturn going to do? And you know what I think of those two, the Karmic Blues Brothers, right? So this is how I'm processing this. First of all, just a good old self-check. Where am I? Stop and analyze. Where am I? Well, I'm a little pressed. I'm a little tired still. I'm a little bit under some, I would say, not as much pressure nearly as trying to get out of North Carolina. But I am feeling still like, you know, there's a lot going on. Okay, is that having an impact on my spiritual connection? Is that having an impact on my heart? Is that having an impact on my, I mean, my heart from a soul perspective? Is that having an impact on my connection with Source? There were some days that it did. It was water over the bow. And I do know that the key to that connection is stillness and quiet. It's not in the chaos. So today will be a good day of just driving, and that should turn the noise level down quite a bit. And the last couple of days here have been wonderful. And by the way, I got to do a little hiking around here yesterday with Stephanie Vickers. You remember Stephanie? She did our medical segments a couple of years ago. She said hi to everybody, and she is looking forward to retooling and coming back in some kind of capacity in the future that she, I really appreciated what she was saying, that same thing, same thing as this conversation. She's focusing on her inside before she focuses on the communication outside, and I so respect and appreciate that, and we just had a wonderful hike yesterday, wonderful time together. But I think that's exactly the first step in dealing with this. Go back and square up. Where are you? Are you being integrous? Are things in order? Are things in alignment? Does your walk and your talk match? If all of that checks out and you know that you're square or you know at least you're in the best alignment you can be, then you know that you can toss the coin and choose the high timeline side. Another little trick that I do in these instances, hey Saturn, hey Pluto, is there anything I need to work on? Is there anything I need to know? Is there anything I need to release? Is there anything I just need to disappear from my life? 
let me go ahead and get a jump on it so that you don't have to bang me over the head. Then you listen and watch and observe, and whatever comes up is the answer. Maybe that awning was part of that. I don't know, but it could be, and if it is, whatever I'm supposed to let go of regarding the van or the awning, okay, let go. I'll ask for continued clarity around that one. Let's take this a step further. So let's say that we've done our check, we've flipped the coin, we're on the high timeline side. What is Saturn? Is Saturn fast like Mars or Mercury? Or is it slow and steady? Saturn never represents a hurry. Now, I have about 600 miles to conquer today. So what would be the best way in light of Saturn and Pluto, which of course is the slowest moving planet, what would be the best way to approach this? Push, 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 fast, fast, fast? <laughs> no. Not even with the Sun and Mercury there. No, let Saturn set the pace. Now that actually brings us to the transition of what's happening over the next two days. Because tomorrow, early at 4.53 a.m., Mercury, the speedster, the trickster, <laughs> sextiles Jupiter, the expander. 4.53 what a.m.? Uh, that would be Eastern a.m. <laughs> Good question. And then on Friday at 7.14 in the morning Eastern, the Sun sextiles Jupiter. Now, you say, what about Saturn? When does it sextile Jupiter? It does not in this sequence. It's moving too slow. It's at 9 degrees. Jupiter is at 11 degrees. So the other two catch up and sextile Jupiter directly over the next 48 hours. Saturn already did back in June of last year and will not again until I believe it was 2034. Break this apart. Mercury tomorrow. Transportation. Also communication. You could slug communication into everything that we've talked about and applied to transportation or learning or knowledge or anything else related to Mercury. You could get the same interpretation. Now Jupiter expands, we know that. We also know it can bring good luck. So it's bringing good luck through a sextile to transportation or communication or the et cetera, et cetera, if you take it slow and steady. So again, we're using Saturn as the plumb line of all of this because it has already had its sextile to Jupiter months and months and months ago. Friday morning, early, the sun sextiles Jupiter, so that just brings it all in. You know, Steve Forrest has a Sun-Jupiter conjunction in his natal chart, and I forget exactly how he words it. It's really priceless, but it's something along the lines of, I never hesitate to listen to a good offer. In other words, he knows that the universe has brought him good things consistently over and over and over. I mean, he had it career-wise early on when Bantam Books decided to publish The Inner Sky, and it's just gone on from there. So in other words, you show up, and you get the Jupiter blessing. Well, let's apply that here on Friday. We're moving toward it over the next two days. That's a good window of applying. The energy is getting stronger. So you see how if you flip that coin on the high timeline side, there really is nothing to fear here. And then also realize this is Pisces. This is the connection to the home office. This is Liz Green's redemption of our soul, returning to source from which it came. It's the Pisces that Neptune still is in and still rules. So there is just a ton of potential spiritual connection here. And that would be the other good thing, because Mercury ruling the mind means that we can bring the heart and the mind together really strongly for the rest of this week. So I hope that helps. There's a positive read on something that maybe the collective is projecting gloom and doom. I don't know. I haven't had time to read, but... Take the high timeline side and play with this fun and favorably. All right? Have a good day. I'm going to be slow and steady down the road, and I will see you from Little Rock tomorrow.